Okay, folks, it's time for another edition of Make Electronics. It's time for experiment three, applying pressure, where we talk about voltage. Okay, so this is what you're going to need. Once again, our 9 volt battery is returning. We're going to need a few resistors. As I said in the previous video, we're going to recycle some of them from the previous one. We got our 470 again. We're going to add a 1 kilo ohm, a 1.5 kilo ohm, a 2.2 kilo ohm, and a 3.3 kilo ohm. And once again, our red LED is returning. And once again, I'm not following exactly how the book goes, just to keep it all organized uh, for the video. So I have uh, duplicates of all the resistors. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get a baseline measurement. So why don't we hook up the red LED and make sure everything still works. So I'm just going to hook the positive side of the battery up and then to the negative. And then our light comes on. Okay, good. So we can see that our light still works. Okay. For the purposes of the experiments that we're going to do, we need to get a baseline voltage of uh, what our battery is. Since we've used it already, you know, saying it's 9 volts is kind of misleading. So as I got it hooked up, I'm just going to go 8.889 volts. So as you can see, it's dropped a little bit. So I'm just going to write this down. Yeah, up here. 8.889. 9 volts. So let's remember that. Okay, before we move on, um, I think I should go over some basics. Now, there are great videos out there, so I'm not going to go reinvent the wheel, but for the purposes of what I'm doing, uh, let's go over a few things uh, just to make sure we're all on the same page. Well, let me uh, clear this desk for a minute. Okay, here's my cheap dry erase board because I'm tired of erasing my desk. So, obviously in the first, um, the main thing of this experiment is voltage. Um, you want to think about voltage in terms of its potential energy. It's the same as water pressure if you're thinking in terms of water. And then you have amperage or current. They're used interchangeably, but they're measured in amps. Amperage is um, your flow rate. Think of it, I guess, as kinetic energy. You know, you're actually using something. Then we talk about resistance. Resistance, in this scenario, could be your faucet or spigot. It controls how much energy or electrons are flowing through um, your appliance. So if you open the faucet full sludge, you're giving very little resistance. So you're going to get a lot of flow. But if you close it up, you're going to get less flow. So, And then watts or wattage. Wattage, you can, uh, can call it a usage rate. So, uh, you know, you've got a lot of things, you know, just think, think of an old fashioned 60 watt light bulb. A 60 watt light bulb, essentially what that's telling you is that if you leave that 60 watt light bulb on for one hour, it's going to consume 60 watt hours of power. So, and that watt hour of power is something that's used in billing. Uh, now, I could really go into the weeds about exactly what this uh, all means. It goes into the jewels and columns, I think that's pronounced correctly. But like I said, there's plenty of other videos out there. So, just know, basically, if you do voltage times uh, amps, you get your wattage and so on and so forth. And then you can do other kinds of math to uh, get every other one on here. So yeah, if you have, if you have two, you can get the other two. So if you have any questions, let me know. If you want me to make a more detailed video or maybe some fancy graphics or something, let me know. But yeah, there's plenty of other great videos out there. So for the purposes of all the videos I'm doing, it's going to be all DC. That is direct current. That's negative and positive. It just flows in a loop. 
Now, the electricity that comes to your house is AC, which is alternating current, which it doesn't flow like that. It's uh, oscillating. So it's more, the energy is more of a wave that goes through the wire. It's great for long distances. Uh, that's why you rarely see ever direct current high voltage transmission lines, because direct current, if you ever mess with LEDs, you have to do power injection because the voltage starts to disappear. So, let me put that away. If you haven't told, um, been able to see, I got three multimeters for the experiments I'm going to do today. Uh, obviously, the book doesn't call out three, but, you know, I want to be extra. So, again, we got our fancy smart one, our digital but manual, and our truly analog. This is was my dad's. It's, I think it's from the 80s. Still works fine. Okay. So, we already got our voltage for our battery. So, we're going to hook this circuit back up. Change this out. And we are going to look at different points on the circuit to show you how uh, voltage and you know pressure is working. Uh, so I'm going to turn this on. And the first thing is I'm going to measure the voltage across the battery. And we've already done that, but we're going to do it again. And the second one, I'm going to go across the LED. So again, from the long terminal is the positive, and the short terminal is the negative. And as you can see, we've got 1.81 volts. Okay, so for the last one, on this, I need to turn it on, actually, before I connect it. Um, we're going to go to the left side of the resistor, and to the right side, the negative. So that is coming back at 5, 7 volts, give or take. So that's coming back at 7 volts. So if you haven't noticed, 1.8 one and roughly seven, remember it's analog, so I'm guessing if you add that up, you get about 8.8. This is demonstrating how the pressure works and how that resistor is working. So, this 1.8 that's the forward voltage of the LED, that's how much voltage the LED needs to shine bright. And the leftover, you can look at the resistor over here. It's showing seven. You add it up, you got your full circuit. That's pretty cool. Okay, now the other things I uh, talked about was amperage. So let's uh, reconfigure this and show you how cool this is when you put the resistance in uh, different resistors and you do the math. So let's get to it. I'm going to disconnect that. I'm not worried about that right now. We're actually not going to put that there. We're going to hook it up to this first resistor. This is the 470. And now I'm going to hook that up to there. Now I'm going to turn this on. So, move this over a little bit. Now, there was a reason why I wrote this down earlier. So, we got 18.7 MA. That is 
milliamps. Okay, so let's move on to the next resistor, and this was the 1K. So, 8,825 microamps. This is the same as 8.84 milliamps. So, same conversion, 5.91 MA. I don't want to hear any comments about my poor rounding skills. And now the 2.2, it's a 4.08 MA. And the last one. Okay, now why did I do that? Okay, so now if we do the math. Hey everyone, future sleepy here. Uh, in editing, I realized that I screwed up. So in the forecoming math, don't get scared, I made an error. I said everything had to be in kilo ohms from doing the math. The reason the equations have to be in kilo ohms is because my amps are in milliamps. Ohm's law is amps times ohms. Since my amps are already in milliamps, my ohms have to be in kilo ohms. Now, I could do the math and change the milliamps to amps, and then I would just be able to times times ohms. So, there you go. It's just a unit thing. So, yeah. Don't uh, be thinking everything has to be in kilo ohms. It's ohms law is amps times ohms, in amps and in ohms. So there you go. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. Oops. Four seventy. You have to do everything in thousand ohms. That's how the way math works. So this is one. This is. 1.5 times 2.2 times 3.3. Okay, so as you can see all this, if you're wondering, these are volts. If you uh, multiply your amperage times your ohms in one thousandths, you can get your voltage. And how nifty is that where when you go through these, remember, that was our voltage we started with, 8.8.8.9, That's pretty cool. So yeah, um, you don't have to be afraid of the math here. It's actually very straightforward when it comes to doing this, and I know a lot of people don't like math, but it's really not that bad. Okay, now if you're familiar with any of this at all, you may have noticed something that basically I made the equation V equals I times R. Voltage, resistance in kilo ohms, and I for current, which is measured in amperage. Ohm's law, one of the basics you need to know. But we're not done with this video because there's something else I can show you. Now, there are so many resistors out there, different things in them, but you can mix and match. So you can get, uh, you can fine tune exactly what you need. So here, I'm gonna move this just uh, over here. And I'm just going to move that there. I'm going to put that there. And I'm going to take another 3.3K. I'm going to put it in series. And as you can see, it dropped to 
1.347 microamps or milliamps, sorry. Very interesting. That's what happens when we did in series. So when you do something in series, you're adding the values together. So times 6.6. .6. So what happens if we do them in parallel? So we're gonna put, I'm gonna have to turn the direction of these so it works. So I'm gonna make them go north to south instead. put this at the first leg and I'm going to take this the negative and I'm going to put it over here Wow do you see what happened there we jumped up to 5.387 ma so since we're doing 3.3 .3 and the same you could basically just divide the value of 3.3 .3 divided by 2 1.65 so we get 8.8 8 volts and 1.347 times 6.6 8.89 volts that is pretty cool obviously the math gets a little more involved if you have uh, resistors that are not the same value but this isn't a math class so, if you want me to go over something like that, let me know and I will. But yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm trying to work on making it a little more brighter. And maybe I'll even do some zooming in. Yeah, that might be better. So, let me know what you think. And uh, stay sleepy, my friends.